You have done so many things to your career. Besides Leo, if someone has never seen anything you've done, it's the first thing you want them watching and why. Oh, I would say probably, oh God, that's a tough one. I mean, covers so many different kinds of comedy, you know? I mean, the Star Wars Triumph visit is so, it's bliss to me because it's like, he's making fun of these kids, but they are totally in on it. You know, and not that not they're in on the joke, but they're they're game for it. So it's such a happy eleven minutes of comedy. Oh, I've watched that eleven minutes a number of times. Yeah. I actually want to ask you because you you're fearless when you do stuff like that. And what what's the most nervous you were when doing Triumph, recording one of those bits? Okay, I can tell you it was probably when I went to Texas to cover Ted Cruz and Beto O'Rourke, just because. Um, you know, over the past 15 years, uh, the world's just gotten tenser and tenser and we're polarized. And Texas is very light with, I mean, just to be very frank, you know, you just get paranoid. And I, like I had been to the Trump inauguration and I that was the first time I'd really like doing the same thing I always do. But now there are a couple of people aggressively like tearing my tearing the cigar out of Triumph's mouth. One motorcycle guy, one biker was like, get the fuck out of here, man. Get out of my fucking face. Like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then another biker's like, okay, buddy, calm down, calm down. He's cool. He's cool. And then, so I went to Texas and I thought, oh shit, man, it's just one crazy person. I was scared. And, but, but once you're there, people are just people and they're not, you know, Everything is everything is heightened on CNN or these places. Everybody, they always show you the craziest person because that's what gets attention. Sure. They do it in every story. Um, and, you know, even with, with the, everything, it just, you see the, the most extreme because that's what gets the clicks and that's what gets, and so it makes people even more drawn apart from each other to see the world you know, displayed that way. Jumping into why I get to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> switching completely gears. Uh, I really- I am a comedian, by right. the way. <laughs> Sorry. I, I really enjoyed this movie. Yeah. And one of the things that I really enjoyed is that like, there's a lot of message in this movie, but it's a sweet delivery. It's like a brownie. You don't realize you're getting broccoli inside. So can you talk about that aspect? The, the kids are going to learn and you know what I mean? Yeah. I hope it kind of sneaks up on kids because it's just kind of funny at first. Oh, this crazy lizard is caught and he's talking and then he's having this conversation and this girl's confessing that she talks too fast, but she doesn't realize she's talking too fast as she's talking about talking too fast and singing about it. And I feel like, you know, all these subjects are funny, writing a Dear John letter to your drone or, uh, you know, <laughs> they're just inherently silly and playful. But at the same time, the message starts creeping up on you that these kids are really starting to get something out of having someone to share their fears with. And uh, they haven't had that. I know I didn't. And it would have helped a lot if I had felt comfortable enough to, you know, because your parents are the best, but you just kids aren't ready to do that most of the time. And uh, and I didn't, I didn't do it with my friends, really. And, and I would have loved to. I think I would have been a happier kid. I was pretty happy anyway because I was funny and I just got, I kind of skated by just by making people laugh and making myself laugh. Did you ever think, because the, the drone thing I found, I found very funny, yeah. but it's, it's over the top compared to well, a sure. lot of the other stuff. Yeah. Were you ever, did anyone ever said, maybe this, does this work? Or were you always yes. like, oh no, this is funny? Uh, I got a lot of push back on the dancing stopwatches. <laughs> Sometimes it was storyboard artists who get into these animation rules like, okay, you know, uh, maybe the animals talk here, but shouldn't these kind of animals not talk? Or And now this is a bridge too far, I'm sorry. Dancing stopwatches, I mean, this is a break from reality that just, and I'm like, it's an animated movie, we can do anything we want. And I just don't, you know. But we actually like cut that down a little bit because then the network, the Netflix people also were like, that's just, you know, people don't like it. And there were some people in the audience on test screenings that hated the dancing stopwatches, but not a lot. Like, sure. I mean, the movie got great numbers, but there are a few people who don't like it. So it's like, really? It's like five out of a hundred people. But 
we did trim it down a little bit, but it still works. It's still there. That, I'm always curious about the editing process. So how did the film change in the editing room in ways you guys didn't expect? It really, um, it really didn't change that much other than just it was a very long. We got it down to 91 minutes before credits, which is pretty standard, you know. And, and I was thinking it should be 96 because that's what Moana was. I thought, oh, a musical, you got to tell the story and have songs. But but we managed. And I mean, the biggest struggle was the third act, which is a very common thing in movie writing. And we just, we just um, you know, tried different things. And I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't have a better answer. On no, that. it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to switch back to something yes, else yes. you did, uh, which is TV Funhouse. Yeah. Um, I always loved those when I watched them when I was younger. What's the one, and it's a similar question to the beginning. If someone has never seen a TV funhouse, what's the one you want them watching? Oh boy, that's tough because uh, some of them are referential, you know. I can just tell you some of my favorites. Like, I mean, I love the idea behind the ambiguously gay duo because, you know, the message was, why do we care? You know, the, the people kind of lose sight of that. They think it's a gay joke, but it's really about the villains. That's what was funny about it to me. Why are they so obsessed with whether these guys, you know, have sex or not? It's like they're superheroes. They're, they're the ultimate heroes on Earth. And people are wasting their time thinking about that. So I love that concept and I always will. And then, you know, uh, there was one where Mr. T, uh, I guess, you know, and then there's the Christmas one with Jesus. I, I, I got too many of them. God damn. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 and so many of them are so funny, which is why I'm yes. saying thank you for your work <laughs> and for making me laugh for so many years. And thank I really you. wish this is, I hope this is a huge hit for you and thank everyone you. involved. Thank you. I'm very proud of it. It means a lot to me that it has that kind of silliness and a, and a, and a very simple human message to it.